Hello there, this is Caitlin Greer all the way from Charlotte, North Carolina. I am in your Maori class 123. Um, unfortunately, reporting from Charlotte and not Wellington, where I wish we could be in person. But today I'm here to tell you about my Pua Pua project. Um, my carving was of Tui and Rauru, um, typically found in your local Faranui like we have on campus in Wellington. And so in my carving, we have two images on top of each other. Um, I believe this represents their lineage. So on top we have Tui and we have Rauru. On the bottom as we have Tui represented as the father and Rauru as the son. Um, in some Eastern religions, um, it is often thought that Tui was actually the grandfather of Rauru, um, by pop but by popular belief, we understand that it was actually his son. Um, and he also had a brother, Awanu Arangi, um, who they ended up going different ways later in life. Um, so that's where we get Tui's reputation of being known as one of the principal ancestors of Maori tribes, um, most commonly among the North Island. Um, the two sons of Tui, um, again, Rauru and Awanu Arangi, um, were born in Fakatane, originally known as Kake Or Oraroa, um, which is actually located on the North Island um, northeast near the uh, Bay of Plenty. And so, um, Fakatane is actually a neighboring area to where Tui grew up in Kapeuterangi, um, which is actually considered um, one of the oldest village settlements or PA in New Zealand. Um, so again, that's in the North Island and the Northeast region, which is really cool. And so when Rauru came of age, he decided to start off on his own. So he got in his own waka, or his canoe, and called it Pahituanoa. Um, and he went along with his paddle, Te Rangiotihitu. And he decided to establish his own tribe. Um, he remained on the North Island, and so... His tribe of the Naga Raru people um, decided to settle in the Taran Taranaki region, which is actually on the western coast of the North Island. Um, you may have also heard of the Strato Volcano, which the area was named after Mount Taranaki. Um, this is actually most notably near the popular city of New Plymouth. Um, if that gives you any idea of the region that we're talking about. Um, so tradition, um, before all of New Zealand was settled and before all of the British um, and the English influence came, um, tradition had defined this area um, as between the Patea River and Lake Kia Iwi. Um, so that's how we could establish barriers between different tribes of New Zealand. And so, the Naga Raru Kitahi people um, were actually to known have were thought to have descended from the uh, Aotea canoe, um, as the Te Kahui Riri people um, were also known as the Flying People. And so, um, this mistake of different ancestry jumping all over the place um, and assuming that they had come from the same canoe um, comes from their very tight closeness in locality um, between these two tribes. So because they were so close, um, they ended up working together as one village ultimately. And so as people are working together and getting to know each other and cohabitating, we led to more and more manage, uh, marriages that had intertwined between the two tribes and to the two groups. So it was very easily um, to be mistaken as one group um, that you would think would come from one heritage. Um, but now we know differently. And so um, because of this and because of Rauru's actions, 
of taking his own waka down to Taranaki, um, he was known to be a, a founding ancestor, um, or at least involved in the founding of at least 12 other hapu tribes or sub-tribes. And so, um, he's very popular in his name and very well respected um, because of his influence in so many different tribes across New Zealand um, of today's iwi of New Zealand. Um, Raru was best known for being a wise, conscious, quiet man. Um, many would say that he was a man of few words. Some would say he's a man of one mind. Um, he was thought of as a person who would always think things through and always consider all aspects of a decision and all aspects of the consequences. And so... He was very honorable in that sense, is that once he had made a decision, it was a decision that would stick. He was a man that was known to be reliable and honest and loyal. Um, all of the things that we as humans try to be, you know. Um, in An Naga Raru saying goes, Ko Raru Ki Tahi E Kore Te kupu iwati, and it's translated to Rauru of the one word. Never would be, never would that word be broken. Excuse me, let me say that again. Rauru of the one word, never would that word be broken. So that means that he would always keep his promise and he would always fulfill what he said he was going to do. So he was very noble noble man that was very well respected um and so in maori culture and now in my world um to be compared to someone like rauru or to be compared to him um it's a very high compliment um and it should not be taken lightly as um one should be very grateful for such high compliment and to be thought of as responsible and real and conscious, which we all strive to be. So I'm very happy to have learned about Raru and where he came from um, and his heritage. Thank you.